All right, let's talk about the Prophet Snake today, the one and only Snowager. So let's talk about the lore, let's talk about the prizes, and what you probably came here for. Let's talk about the odds. So, first off, according to uh, Neo Jelly, the Snowager is a massive ice snowicle who lives in the ice caves with a stash of stuff. It's awake 21 hours a day to prevent thieves from stealing its treasure. While getting something from him is random, it's possible to nab a nag, scratch card, key ring, or other goodies. Alright, so I didn't know he was actually just a legless <laughs> snowicle. All the other snowicles have legs, but apparently our big bad snake lost his legs in probably some war in the past super sad i made that up we're gonna go with it for right now but i guess the mariquan also has no legs but all right let's talk about the two official pages he has on neopets so this would actually be true canon at long last keblin the snow asia had gathered up the courage to enter the dreaded cavern of the snowager in hopes of attaining a share of the monster's legendary stash of riches supposedly of those possessing the temerity to enter the cave only the ones with wisdom to turn around after bearing witness to the snowager's terrifying majesty have ever lived to tell the tale and now just standing around the corner from the snowager's lair keblin was determined to find out once and for all, just what it was that lay beyond the other side of the wall. As a quick side note, is this supposed to be like a play with like Smog from The Hobbit, but he's just a little ice snake? Maybe, I have no idea. At the pivotal moment, Keblin recalled the words of his mentor, Greydolf. So weird they have Adolf in here and it's like Gandalf kind of. So yeah, that, <clears throat> that answers that question. I didn't read ahead. So yeah, I want to be surprised too. Who had himself once harbored aspirations of capturing the Snowager's treasure? It's madness, <laughs> Gradolf said, told him. If you know what's good for you, you'll forget you even heard about the Snowager. No one has ever gotten his treasure. I highly doubt that anyone ever will. That's cute. It's no Asia's. Although he disapproved of Keblin's decision to go after the Snowager, he reluctantly agreed to help him get ready for the voyage. As an old friend of Keblin's father, Greydolf figured that if he was so determined to go, he might as well be properly prepared for the trip. You see, as young Asia's, Greydolf and Keblin's father, Kendrak, had boldly ventured into the Snowager's lair when they... So that's just like a fairy's backstory? Alright, anyway. When they reached the outskirts of its cavern, the two parted ways. Greydolf decided to head back while Kendrick, undaunted, went forward. He was never heard from again. Okay, I get it. This guy's dad went to the cave with this guy. Only one went in and he never came back. All right. Revenge story. And now years later, Keblin sought to avenge his father and claim the Snow Witcher's treasure for himself, readying himself for what lay ahead. Keblin took a deep breath, tiptoeing around the corner. He turned to see the Snow Witcher. The monster was so hideous, Keblin couldn't help but let out a blood-curdling yell. He should have yodeled. <laughs> With that, the monster was awoken from its slumber. Peering sleepily at the petrified Snow Asia, the mighty beast let out an earth-shattering bellow, the likes of which Keblin could have never imagined. As the thundering roar reverberated through the cavern, icicles from the ceiling began to fall from the sky. One hit Keblin on the shoulder and he winced in pain. With that, Keblin ran for his life, never once stopping to look back. Mm. I guess he didn't, you know, obviously avenge his father. Well, 
Rip Kendrag. All right, the second one is called Simon and the Snowager. It was cold, too cold. Simon the plushy Tuscany shivered as he crossed over the gigantic frozen arc that was the entrance to the famous ice caves, and even more so, the Snowager. Of course, nobody had advised Simon to go after the Snowager's treasure. No, they all disapproved of it. But if I'm ever going to finish my neg collection, <laughs> Simon had often told himself as motivation for getting the discouraging words of his friends and family. However, hearing the snowager's intimidating snore as he crept alongside the icy blue walls caused a part of Simon to think that maybe his neg collection wasn't so important after all. The plushy Tuscany shivered as a wave of cold air passed through the empty ice caves, no doubt strong winds from Terror Mountain. Simon surveyed his lifeless surroundings. The negri was closed for remodeling. The walkie who ran the scratch card kiosk had abandoned his station for some lunch, and the shoiru who owned the ice crystal shop was a recluse. With the exception of some young bruises building a snow fort in the distance, Simon was alone. Perfect circumstances for sneaking past the Snowager unnoticed. As a side note, someone with wings should steal from him. <laughs> That's what I would do. Peering around, Simon searched for the entrance to the Snowager's cave. Loud, wheezy snores echoed the freezing area as the Tuscany looked around. While Simon was no genius, he had a firm notion that the Snowager was located in a cave with an entrance resembling its resident. A giant icy mouth lay ahead. As Simon slowly crept inside, he could hear the Snowager's every movement. As he was sure the Snowager could of him. Uh-oh, drama. Simon was astonished at the interior of the Snowager's cavern. While there appeared to be less than adequate room for the enormous Snowager itself, there was enough treasure cramped inside the cave for everybody and their puppy blue to become millionaires. Piles and piles of negs, plushies, frost cannons, key rings, stamps, slushies, swords, potions. They were hundreds upon hundreds of rare treasures that would make even the richest Neopians jealous. But nothing else mattered to Simon. That is, nothing else but the super neg that lay on the top that lay on the pile of items behind the Snowager that climbed its way to the ceiling. The Tuscany was surprised at himself having not even taken much notice of the gigantic icy snake that was in front of him. The titanic Snowager snored as it slept, its tail slowly swaying with every ice breath it took. It lay on a large pile of plushies, while not the most comfortable Simon believed it was better than sleeping on healing potions. Simon scratched his chin as he looked up, looked up at the super neg at the top of the pile, racking his brain for a way to acquire such. After the sought after neg that would complete his collection, if he were to climb, the slightest movement could send the potion shattering, waking up the snowager, and well, Simon couldn't climb. As the Tuscany crawled up to the bottom of the Neg's pile, he noticed a medium-sized rock near the yellow Petri key ring. Thoughts raced through his mind as he picked up the rock. I'm quite a good aim, he assured, closing one eye and pointing the rock at the Super Neg. Bad idea. And I'm quite a good throw, he thought, flinging the heavy rock at the Neg on top of the pile. But I'm not a good catch, Simon remembered. He whirled around and began to run as the rock made contact with the glassy neg, sending it tumbling off the pile towards the hard, icy sleet. The snowager's head shot up in such a loud crash, echoed around the small cavern. It spun around, eyes darted around, every which way, searching for the intruder. The snowager rose out the pile of plushies and slithered around the cavern, investigating every item in a snowy lair. Pile after pile, 
the snowager slid over to, making sure everything was there. A genius nag by the big rock at the entrance, a blue frost cannon by the stalagmite shaped like Dr. Sloth, a kiwi slushy halfway buried at the back of the cave. After several minutes, the snowager was sure that nothing had been taken from its treasure-filled abode. Slithering back to its pile of plushies, the snowager took one last look around the cavern before laying its head down on a rather comfortable plushy Tuscany. Oh boy. <laughs> I wonder if like the story implies that like the weight or the cold just killed him. I'm not sure you can kill a plushie or even a Neopet. I've seen a Mohawk skull item. Oh man, that is... <laughs> this is actually one of the better lures I've seen so far. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, on to the items. All right, the items. Well, how the wager works, pretty important. All right, we've done the lore, we've seen that. He's asleep three times a day, so you can visit him three times a day, I'm pretty certain. 6 a.m. to 7, 2 to 3, 10 to 11. They're all Neo, Neo Standard Time, which for me is my time, so <laughs> that's easy to remember. I think most of us know about the, what can this call it, the Christmas celebration. Basically, during Christmas, you're guaranteed one free prize a day, which actually also increases your chance. Does it? Well, it, we'll worry about the odds later, but I, <laughs> you're guaranteed an item. It's pretty cool. It's worth doing. All right. So, key rings. Let's check out the key rings. All trash. You don't want key rings. Well, moving on. We do like negs. We like negs. So there's 16 and there's only one. That's worth money. Actually, two. The regular neg you can get from here and Daisuru. And the purple neg, just neg prices are just going to the moon. There's that neg you need for the to increase your i think your pet stats the, the snag yeah that's going up in price it's going to the moon so yeah that's not bad i usually get this melted one or the gooey ones but i have got the purple i have got the purple before it does feel pretty good all right r79 plushie these are all very useless but they are quite cute it's always cute to get like exclusive to your account like an Iron Man, only you touch that plushie. Pretty cool. Any over 1,500? Maybe one? Ooh, a few. Okay, the top five. This is a good top five. No one likes Norboos. <laughs> but it's got a Yasuki, a burger, and a turkey. Just in time for Thanksgiving, at least for Canada first, then you can... The American one after that. All right. Scratch cards. You can get one of the three. Just the basic ones. This is kind of sad. They could change this because, you know, current year meme. And no one wants to wait six hours. But you can obviously go to the other one for every two hours in the Haunted Forest. Snowballs. Also quite sad. R89. Once again, nothing of value. They should find a way to revamp these. Snowballs to me were so iconic of doing snow fairy quests and just trying to be in the battle dome. So there's 31 items up to rarity 70. Once again, not too exciting. Could be updated. Let's just see what would happen if you just went a little higher. A little higher. Nothing. Merka. All right, keep on keeping on. Why we all come to the Snowager. Before I get into the odds, I'm pretty certain, by the way, that each table here is exclusive to its own. Like, you got to roll that table, then you'll get these items. So I'm pretty certain all of these are on the same table. Actually, no, not. I'm wrong. <laughs> Forgive me. We'll talk about. Come on. Wait till the odds part. Let's just see what's worth NP. Sword, R101, trash. 101, trash. 101, 
trash, trash, trash. All right. Moving down. Scarf, shovel, gummies, which uh, <laughs> implication in 2023. <laughs> this is cute. Ice, blasted, hissy, plushy, and Kiko. Moving on. Ice, ice blasted wig. Jigsaw. My voice is given out. Ooh, iced again. Tale of an ice cave explorer. It's like there and back again. A play on the Hobbit. Iced iceberg salad. We all know what iceberg lettuce is. All right, the noodles or the ramen. I'd eat that. Impossible treasure. Legend says the Snow Witcher keeps the rarest treasures in his mouth. Hmm. Sus. Mint Snow Ager pie. Cool little head there. I like that. Mutant nag. I'm pretty sure this is no longer possible on the loot table. Does anyone have one? Let's find out. Nope. Peaceful sleep. Now you can find out why the Snow Ager sleeps so much. <laughs> why doesn't he hire bodyguards? That's what I would do. All right. Platinum nag. This is this is me personally. I want to get one of the nags, but you know we got to keep dreaming. 1.5, 1.2 million. Feels pretty good. Really big chunk of ice. Hey, it works, doesn't it? Yeah, you're right. Sloth nag. Let's see. Can we find one of them? Looks super cool. Ooh. Hmm. Sweet sass girl. Mm -hmm. One false move and you might get icy blast. Love it. S Snowager deserves his own event. He does. Snowager cake. We at least deserve like a chibi of him. Collection charm. Collector's guide. Ooh, a cupcake. Does the cupcake even exist? Mm, apparently not right now. Snowager pet pet bed. That looks super fun and comfortable. I like that. The above angle isn't very inspiring, but... And the little pull along. All right. Last three for this table, the Snowager ruler puzzle, twists and shapes around to solve this puzzle. I like that. Snowager stained glass window. 170k, I like it. A rather novel window for your Neo home. All right. This is my favorite item from the Snowager and my first ever live stream. Where I gambled, we went here at two o'clock, like I guess all five of us, and Strawberry got the Yusuki and sold it to me. So, super special memory. I'm never gonna sell that that Yusuki. Yeah, sorry, Eric. I know you got one now finally, but this one is mine. There are many like it, but this one is mine. I know you believe me, but just in case, there it is. It's super cute. <laughs> I like how the Yusuke has blue eyes to match. You can't even see the little bow tie or little useful bow in the back. All right. And then this is this is the dream right here, obviously, that people associate with the game. The jeweled nag and the diary of an ice cruncher. A priceless collectible or delicious snack. The choice is yours. Okay, Bane. The choice is yours. Diary of an ice cruncher. Every day he would crunch ice, huge mouthfuls of it. He took writing he took to writing down the reactions of those around him. Unfortunately, it looks like the snow ager didn't appreciate that sound. Because he got chomped. Uh Alright. Alright, there's some there's some exclusive stuff here. There's an avatar, but now nah, what you're all been waiting for. Can I verify these odds? No. Do I believe them? I mean, I don't, I don't 
not believe them. I think they're relatively true. So the way that they kind of forecast this is I break my chair, that there's 11 tables, and obviously you can't roll. So these, you, it has to be between 6 to 7 a.m. Obviously, 14 is 2 to 3, and we all know that 22 is 10. So that, that's what that stands for. Okay, so important. So the assumption here is that Outside of December, if you roll, you have a chance to roll all 11 dices. But apparently, the ones where he, where you get no reward, is a 50% chance. Okay. So that means that these other ones are all out of a scale out of 50%. So it's not they're all they're not all equal values. Another pastime here: busting out the regular calculator. Okay. So we know that if there's if there's four, if there are fifty percent for these ones, that means that there's seven left, which one divided by seven is fourteen percent. Granted, it was not half, but because there's half here, it means there is a seven percent chance to roll each. Sorry, not seven. A one in fourteen percent chance. One in fourteen, which is seven percent to roll each specific tile here. And you're like, that sounds pretty interesting. Where does it all go wrong? And let me show you where it all goes wrong. It's right here. It's tile 10. Tile six is snowball, nag, key ring, plushie, and then right down here is the 11. I don't think anything down here is important. But before, I, before we go to the big ticket item, the avatar only gets rolled when you roll a one or a two, and obviously a two, so that's a one and 750 basically. And here, I have no idea what the charity pack is, but let's talk about the good items. So you have to roll a 10, then you have to roll a one out of 500. So first you have to roll <laughs> the one in 14, if it's not Christmas. Or December then you have to roll a 1 in 500 to roll to a third table so that's 1 out of 14 and then 1 out of 500 which bring up the calculator here's our trusty calculator so 14 so it's 1 out of 14 and then 1 out of 500 so there's a 1 in 7 thousand chance you're gonna hit this roll one to ten and then to get this cupcake down here is actually roll one to ten i think i'm right here hold on okay so if i reread this basically you first roll this item and if you roll a one <clears throat> it gives you that item so if you roll a two through nine or two through ten you would go to the next slot down and it would roll again. I've got this glance that's when, sorry, I've got that before. So I think you just keep rolling till eventually you hit a one. That'd be super crazy. But once you hit the one in 7,000, it's going to keep rolling till you roll a one on one of these items. So it's going to, it's going to keep going, I think in circles. That's pretty cool, but obviously the higher, obviously the higher up here, because obviously you first roll this, so a 10% chance. So the actual math to get this is far more complicated than I'm assuming, but as far as I can understand, granted I saw this 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 grid about half an hour ago when I was searching this video up. So what I understand from a basic conceptualization is that there's a one in seven thousand chance to hit this table and start to roll roll down here where whenever you roll a one, you'll get that item. If you roll two to 10, it'll keep rolling down the list, which means that if we negate it to December, there is a one in 3,500 chance you will hit this because it's halved. So if instead of being, we take off that, would make it a 14. <clears throat> yes, it would half it because it removes all these eligible prizes, but you can only come here once a day. So, during December, definitely come down here. 
if someone knows more about this than I do, or there's someone else who has some secret knowledge of how to read this layout better than I do, that seems pretty straightforward. So once again, from what I can understand here today, <laughs> it's one in 7,000 to hit this table. So that is crazy. And then you get one of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight items. Obviously, this Snowager Cupcake rolls out of 100, which means it's the rarest item here by far. So let's see that one last time. So just to check out the item, here it is. Uh, if we go to the trading post history, last one was posted over a full year ago, 25 million, who knows? Same person, DR. Wow, you have to go back over two, three years almost, two and a half years to see a different reseller. And only one person has it in their gallery, which would be super cool. What's it called? Snow Age Cupcake? There it is. The only one we can confirm in the game is owned by MLP Wristback. So once again, if you know more or you pulled something, please let me know. <laughs> I'm not trying to be an expert. I'm trying to have fun, learn as we go. And you know, if we all, if we all work together and chip in a little bit, we're all gonna be uh, <laughs> Neopets masters by the end of this. So as always, have a good day and take care.